Hello SGD and this will be a review of a video I did about two or three years ago about the casing stones of the Great Pyramid. I'll be touching on Khafre and Menkaura Pyramid but I'll uh, begin with the Great Pyramid itself stripped of all the casing stones. Uh, there are a few left in place but they tend to be in very bad condition and this is the uh, J.H. Cole survey in his great paper because he brings in the other stuff uh, mentions Petri and, and his measurements and some um, other points along the way but I'll be using this because he illustrates uh, the condition of the stones that, as they were found rough sketches of sections in various ex excavations of the casing stones of the Great Pyramid, Khufu Pyramid start with the northern base and again they seem to be in the best condition this is uh, modern photos as they are now there's another example and another example so you know, uh, I was believing and I think most people would think that this is you know that they were all that's how they were found and well, there's actually been a bit of work so you go, go back to these old older photo black and white days and you can sort of see even from this angle that it's pretty much the same as it is now uh, now for instance in this part there's a bit of uh, wear or erosion which you can match with there but go to these older photos now notice firstly there's this big chunk missing and they're much more eroded uh, moving towards the west 1837 uh, illustration by Howard Weiss okay 1909 a picture and so we could do a comparison this is also 1909 but looking towards the east now a bit more of a better shot and we do a comparison so we go back to the 1837 uh, now you notice there's a, like a chunk missing here but it's not illustrated there there's also a piece there but that's now gone also that large chunk well that's not in the illustration now it could be that that was damaged removed later so between 1837 and 1909 but again I'll get the impression that this illustration is more uh, not highly detailed because the uh, stones behind are sort of yeah they don't you know it's much more rough and this illustration is not quite catching uh that condition in there as well so that might be the, that damage was there it just wasn't in the illustration not 1837 we compare it now you can just, again northern casing stones just beneath the uh, robber's entrance as it's called and a little bit above that is the main entrance and compare the ancient oh, ancient the vintage 1909 to how it is looks now again that little gap there that damage is still there that chip is identifiable these two other chips go to this photo and again you can see that damage is still there but it's this missing piece which has been repaired and again uh, if I hadn't seen the older photos I would assume that that's just how it was so those pieces have that's been repaired and even the older photo you can see that there's these traces of this erosion and horizontal erosion all traces of that are still there and you can still see traces of it along the bottom of the rest of those stones as with the older condition was the western three quarters of those casing stones were much worse condition back in the day you get an idea of what's been repaired and repaired over so we're looking at that from the east and from the west now we compare this version so we're on now looking towards the east and you can just from the shape of the stones that's where he was sitting now all of that has been repaired over and especially from this angle you can see again like the big gap between that block here and even here so it's been quite a bit of work but also that part as well and because that's the northern side where the tourists are uh, 
the entrance and stuff so maybe as a to give more of a path as well i don't know the exact reasons but that's another part of a restoration work that's been done or preservation or tourist i'll leave it up to you and so we still see traces of some of the back when they were just removing the rubble but again a lot of work has been done and it's a horizontal erosion not vertical okay so the north side now we look at the eastern base again you can see it was very poor condition and he's pointed out you know, that this piece was missing just a little bit of a fragment left of the very bottom of the casing stone uh, he's an older black and white photo on the bottom and from one of my haddock's tours you can even see the staining still seems to be there and that fragment well that's what we're looking at i would assume we come to the southern side and this is in really bad condition so we see what's and now for instance h, h has this little overhang uh, even the sockle the paving stones of you know looking at it you'd think it was uh almost like mud brick so what maybe it was a really low quality stone was used here but the limestone used for the casing from the tour quarry is much softer compared to the uh, other stuff as well easier to work and so there are those parts but again these are restorations so we go to block, block h and they've uh, put this stuff underneath to stop it uh, collapsing down even further so southern side is in really poor condition go to the western side now and you can see like Iron. So there's, they have been eroded away. Now there's on the western side. Again, these are screen uh, shots from the Mike Haddock tour of the Great Pyramid video. But definitely check out Mike Haddock video. Uh, he's been to South America, Egypt, and you know he he shows and uh, great work anyway. Mike Haddock channel really def, really worth watching his uh, trips and his interpretations and looks at the how he looks at things and explains them from a stonemason's perspective but they're quite bad on the western side and again it's all horizontal erosion now you'll see off in the distance that these stones that look still in good condition there we go. but the thing is that uh they're not that these are actually some more uh i wouldn't it's not really preservation because I think it's more illustrative uh, work because when you get closer now you can even see the change in colour so we have the older stone underneath you can see how this has been concreted, cemented, plastered I'm not sure of the exact method, description of what you would call it we have another angle of it and again you can see so it's clearly been formed, you know, not just from the side it's been formed work, form work so it was yeah not the best either um concreter friends would go oh, that's a bit rough all right so again you can see it's the form working still there so we come back to the great so north south east and west the north there are a couple of stones in reasonable good condition but for the most part lots and lots of erosion but on the east the west and especially the south uh not a good stone but the amount of erosion that's an, uh, why on the northern side there was a couple of decent stones left or they may be repaired uh, replaced after maybe they got buried earlier I don't know but yeah, north, east, south and west and even on these northern sections that's all horizontal erosion so my best guess would be it's sand blasted you know the sand grains get blown by the winds and they're con you know, for thousands and thousands of years I was sandblasting this limestone and just tearing it away you can see sandstone erosion in uh, western desert and other places we have, there's big boulders with a tiny little joint left to the earth same principle it's all horizontal erosion not vertical not water erosion put it that way uh, you know, okay I should have had more but there's, there's cool old picture because it shows this giant sandstorm coming in but even when winds are blowing not just when there's a, the occasional big sandstorm but when the wind's always blowing and sand is moving along the ground 
and eroding it away. But in the Menkaure pyramid and the Khafre pyramid, both of them have granite on their lower casing and those stones are in really good condition because granite is more resilient than what is sandstone or limestone um, against sand blasting. So assuming Khufu was first and they bought a nice white limestone all the way around, it's, well, it's maybe, buddy, you know, like we should, uh, you know, in not too long this is going to get blown away. So Cafre and Mankara, they said, no, nah, we want granite, lower case, and only on the lowest parts. And there's a great reason for that because they still do that now. This is uh, just one example here in Sydney, but now you'll, you'll find it all over the world, in London, Paris, New York. So they'll have really nice, beautiful limestone or sandstone buildings. But what they'll tend to do is have granitic, so I think it's actually rhyolite, but they'll have granite at ground level. Now, not just for the sandblasting effect to protect the building, but also for, well, when people are walking past now, one or two won't matter, but over the you know, 10, 20, 50 years, people walking past, kicking it with the side of their shoes, carts and trolleys moving along, scratching it. Well, having the granite there it protects the building much more. And then there is also a sandblasting effect. And so this is a common feature. Again, there was a Mike Haddock video talked about this and he showed uh, especially tombs, mausoleums, really nice white uh, grey limestone and then they'll have granite around the basin as a foundation as well. So at the very least granite panelling to protect it but also tend to have a granite foundation. Well, because if, yeah, if this was sandstone, yeah, there would have been, you know, these blocks would have been, had a lot more uh, wear and tear. Also, fun fact, sandstone is as hard or even harder than granite on most scale. So I'm, you know, if you ever had the misfortune of falling into the ancient lost high technology, ancient aliens, they're always, well, God, granite mows hardness. Granite gets its mows hardness from the silica or silicon dioxide quartz. Sandstone tends to have at least as much or more quartz, so it would be higher. But especially some sandstones, such as a Cossack, have 10 to 15 percent aluminum oxide, corundum. That's nine on the most scale. That's as good as diamond. So yeah, sandstone, even the most crumbly that you could break apart in your fingers, the most scale is much higher than granite. Uh, most scale has nothing to do with chisels or drills or anything like that. So you, when you hear most scale and well, you couldn't chisel it and you couldn't drill it, it's just fundamentally wrong. Moskal has nothing to, Moskal is about what scratches what, not what bangs and, and pounds the other thing as well. So yeah, sandstone, harder than granite. All right, but back to Menkaure and the Caffrey casing stones. Now there's another point that's a lot of, I see often. And so off to the side where these other stones, casing stones, granite ones of Caffrey pyramid, People point to this and say, well, this was beyond the dynastic Egyptians. These stones were moved and then the Romans and other people come along with iron chisels and start acquiring it. Well, that's still in... Some of those are still in position. So it wasn't a later culture coming along. You know, this was done at the time of building. But if you compare it to Khufu or the Great Pyramid and the massive piles of casing stones that were left there well they're made of limestone but we have a similar feature where we have these grooves notches coming along so i would uh, think that this is more of a purpose that so has to do with fitting or maybe to add a slurry in later as a place to pour uh, just to seal up the gaps even better but whether it's granite or the limestone casing stones of the great pyramid this seems to be uh, a feature and even the ones that are in situ at the Caffrey Pyramid have these uh, quarry marks, work marks in there. So if you've seen, again, uh, you, they show a stone that's been moved off to the side and they say, well, a later culture come along because dynastic Egyptians couldn't work granite. They absolutely could have done a few videos on this. Uh, granite is hard, even with steel, it's a slow, patient process. So the earlier tools, uh, flint, shirt, and, well, they work almost as well if you had the choice you'd go for steel but they could have absolutely done that and if 
if that was put in a proper p- perspective, whether stones that are still in place have this, well, again, now, uh, anyway, yeah, uh, steel is not a magic tool. Granite is not an in, uh, unbreakable stone that wasn't able to be worked until steel come along. Paleolithic, Neolithic people have been working it. So there's another, yeah, and uh, the same sort of patterns even in the limestone casings of the Great Pyramid or Khufu Pyramid. So we come back to the north, east, south and west of the Great Pyramid and the limestone, horizontal erosion. I often get asked about uh, Pyramid Sphinx enclosure. I'm not a geologist. I can't, I've got nothing intelligent to add to that conversation at all. If, if I was to read the papers, it's, it's all Greek to me for the most part. But... Uh, at least on the Great Pyramid and the limestone there, there's horizontal erosion, not water erosion running down, but almost certainly uh, wind-blown erosion. So, and the condition of the casing stones as well. If I had put granite there, it'd be much better off, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen, but they did do it in the other two Giza pyramids. So just uh, some observations and just an update again from an older video, cross-referencing as well like this, uh, again, common feature. So older buildings like this, just like the pyramid, you have nice stones on the outside, rough stuff on the inside, and to have uh, something like granite on the street level to protect them as well. So these styles might have changed, but building styles haven't changed that much at all since the pyramids up until now and then of course the modern era and skyscrapers steel concrete and gra- glass come along and then things really did change but if you go to historic buildings um, these were all done by hand you know no cnc machines and and any of that and uh, you know people just you know there was a lot more stonemasons in the day they did fantastic work as well so it's not just about diminishing the ancients that sort of gets under my um skin a little bit it's also at the same time they're diminishing the you know london paris new york sydney you'll look at these old buildings master craftsmen master artisans and with that sgd cheers and have a good one